Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about fungus gnats, um, some fungus gnat prevention tips, um, and uh, how to control fungus gnats if you've got them in your garden already. Uh, first we'll talk about the fungus gnat uh, life cycle. Um, an adult female fungus gnat can lay up to about 300 eggs at a time. Um, their life cycle after they're an adult is only about a week long. Um, once they lay those eggs, it's about uh, five days until those eggs hatch. Once those eggs hatch, they'll be hanging out in your soil, eating dead root material, dead organic matter, and mostly dead fungus or fungus material um, for approximately two weeks. And then at the end of that two weeks, they'll go into a five-day pupate stage. At the end of that five-day pupate stage, they'll emerge as fungus gnat adults. Um, and like I said before, that adult stage is only about a week long. Um, on top of the fact the adults are only around for about a week, they're not really eating as adults. They've done the majority of their consuming in the root system. And while they're adults, their majority of their uh, uh, energy is spent on repopulation and uh, laying eggs. So they're not really eating much, they're not really causing you much damage other than just getting stuck in your fruits and flowers and also just being a pest in front of your face while you're in your garden. But the way we get rid of them is to attack them in the soil and to try to disrupt that long lengthy uh, life cycle. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about how to disrupt that life cycle is just through a physical barrier. Um, this physical barrier is called uh, Natnix, made by a company in the United States called Growstone. It's made by 100% recycled uh, glass, um, which is also really eco-friendly, which is awesome. Um, but on a microscopic level, it's extremely sharp. You can grab it and roll it around your hand. It's not going to cut you. But if you have a half-inch layer of it and you're a microscopic fungus larva and you're trying to crawl through it, it'll absolutely chop you up and cut you up. On top of that, a layer of this on top of your pot will be a very uh, good deterrent for a female fungus gnat to want to lay eggs on top of that. Um, those eggs are not laid in your soil. They're laid on top. And then when the eggs hatch, they burrow into your soil. So if you have something like this on top of your soil, uh, a fungus gnat uh, adult will be less likely to want to lay eggs on it because they know what's good for their eggs and what's not. Um, now if you have a container that has the holes in the bottom, they're probably just going to end up going through the holes instead of the top. So you can either put some, a layer of this in the bottom of your containers um, or try a different method of control. Um, if you have the smart pots, the root pots, or a container that doesn't have any of the real drainage because it's a fabric pot, this works awesome because they don't have any other way to really get into your pot. Um, so next up we'll look at is the, uh, the pesticide, miticide, nemicide, um, the azatrol and the azamax. These are both neem based products and the active ingredient in them is the azadiractin. Um, the azadiractin is basically an anti-feedant and growth regulator. Um, the, it basically will make the plant, make the uh, larva not want to eat and it'll actually kill it through starvation and it also affects its growth patterns so they won't always reach maturity or they'll have trouble with their growth cycle um, which will also disrupt their uh, general life cycle. Um, these are great products, they're OMRI listed organic, um, they're um, also going to be taken up by the plant relatively easily so it's a systemic as well so if you have an outdoor garden and you're fighting leaf miners or leaf sucking insects or a leaf eating insect this will also do a great job for you because the plant uptakes it and holds it in the leaf tissue itself. Uh, once again I'm listed in all 50 states. Um, and then next up we'll talk about is the biological uh, side of things. So we're going to fight them with a the bacteria or we're going to fight them with these uh, microscopic worms. The first one thing we'll talk about is this bacterium. Um, it's called Microlift and it's actually the Bacillus thuringiensis which is uh, also known as uh, Bt. Um, Bt is basically a microscopic pore and uh, protein crystal um, and as the larva move through the medium and eat stuff they're going to eat this spore um, and as that spore gets into their stomach um, it's a toxin so that spore and that protein crystal inside their stomach basically blocks their stomach from being able to protect themselves against their own stomach uh, acids which are very very acidic and um, as they can't block them the acidic uh, acid actually ends up you know, uh, eating through their stomach and causing contamination of their system and killing them. So it's pretty brutal, but that's the way it works and it's highly effective. Um, a little goes away a long way. Um, we do about two drops um, into a gallon uh, for this, and there's a dropper inside of this, so it does go pretty far. Um, also, it can be used like on mosquitoes for or you know uh, bird baths or large ponds as well. Um, 
And then uh, next up we'll look at is the nematodes or the nematodes. Um, there are different species of nematodes. Um, this one is the one specifically that goes after fungus gnat larvae. They find the fungus gnat larvae by sampling air and sampling moisture in the medium and searching for CO2 emission by the larvae. Uh, once they track them down, they hunt them down and find them and they'll enter the larva's body either through an orifice or just through penetration of the actual outer side of the larva. They'll enter the larva and they'll live in there and through living in there and defecating in there, they'll end up killing the larva from the inside out. Once again, pretty brutal but really effective. And uh, the way we use this is a, there's a sponge in these packages um, that is full of I think about four million nematodes um, and then we're going to soak that in water um, and the higher the concentration the better. Um, you can dilute that down pretty thin and still have some good results but because we're going bug versus bug we really want to outnumber the amount of bad bugs with good bugs. So the stronger the concentration, the more effective these are gonna be, especially the nematodes. Um, and then last but not least, I'm just gonna throw out there these little sticky fly traps that are really popular. Um, there are the fungus gnats are attracted to these, this yellow, like a flower basically, um, and obviously they get stuck to them. This is not gonna do much by itself, but it will help in conjunction with any of these to disrupt the life cycle, slow down the population, and stop the uh, constant egg laying by the females if you can catch them. So um, all these together should give you a real good uh, a head start on getting rid of those fungus gnats. Like we talked about earlier, the life cycle is approximately 24 to 25 days, so give it some time. Um, if it doesn't work in the first a couple days, don't freak out, give it a week or more to see if you start seeing a decrease in population. And if you do, um, continue down that path and hopefully within that month you'll pretty much have got them wiped out if not completely wiped out. Um, so I hope this video helped you out. Keep in mind that if you're getting soil from big box stores or areas where soil is stored improperly or just has no other choice but to store it outside, um, it's very simple for a fungus gnat to lay 300 eggs in that bag of soil in two seconds and be gone. So if you end up with them, don't be shocked. It probably is nothing that you did. And uh, they're also, from the store side of things, it is hard to keep them out. Um, the smaller shops do a really good job of keeping their stuff, you know, inside all the time. Um, but some of the bigger companies, you know, you might find them um, having that problem. So keep your eye out. Um, it will decrease yields. It will stress the plant out if the population gets too large. Um, they basically eat organic matter, dead plant matter, and fungus in your medium um, and can eventually cause some issues. So hopefully this video straightened some stuff out for you guys, helped you out, and got you ready to fight fungus gnats if you come in contact with them later this year. And uh, all this stuff's available at 504 Uh We'll see you guys next time.